Hello everyone, welcome back to The Kitchen Table. Today on The Kitchen Table is um, a video that's primarily aimed at beginners, newcomers, or people who have yet to purchase uh, a DJI Phantom line of aircraft. If that doesn't apply to you, then you may or may not want to continue watching. Uh, there are probably some very interesting videos suggested for you down this side of your screen. But, um, but for those who do want to keep, or for the beginners, this is going to be a video about fail-safe uh, or return to home, as it's also known. Uh, before, we go any, before we go any further, as is traditional on this channel, at any rate, uh, we need to discuss the beverage of choice for this video. Back to the old world today, and it's this rather excellent Rioja, obviously from Spain. And look, it's genuine. It even has a hologrammatic label, such as their uh, desire to keep things uh, as genuine as possible. So, um, without further ado, cheers. Hmm. Very nice indeed. Put that out of the way. So, return to home or fail safe. I've had a lot of questions lately about return to home and about when it does and doesn't work and how it works. And, and so I thought I'd actually put together a video uh, just to answer some of the key points that, that I've been asked. So, fail safe, what's it all about? Uh, on the DJI, DJI Phantom range, what fail safe does is basically uh, gives you a bit of security that if something goes wrong between the link between the aircraft and you the tra uh, at the transmitter, the aircraft will have a quick pause, see if it can regain that link, and if it can't, then it will automatically make its way back to the takeoff point, which is probably going to be where you are. Which, when you think about it, is pretty awesome, actually. Um, and it's one of the things that I think people uh, who are new to multi-rotors like about the, the sort of DJI range and that it has these, these safety features built in. But, like everything, there are some wrinkles and some things you need to be aware of. So, the two things that the aircraft needs in order to come back to you are, are one, it's got to know where it is currently, and two, it's got to know where its home point was. Let's deal with that last one first. If you're in the default out of the box phantom mode, how do you make sure that when you take off, your aircraft has stored its home location? Well, the simple answer is you wait until you get those nice steady green lights on it. Um, the biggest uh, issue I think is people getting a bit excited and a bit keen, they bring it out of the case, they put it on the ground, hit the battery button, get the startup beeps, and within seconds they launch it and off they fly. If you don't see those green lights, then that means uh, that the aircraft has not recorded its, its home point. And if you're busy flying around, at some point it will get a lock sufficiently to, to, locate, uh, to record its home point, but that may not be where you are anymore, of course. So that's the first stage, is to make sure that you give it some time to get a home lock before you take off for the first time. The other thing it needs to know is where it currently is in order to work out the difference and fly back. Um, and that's, I think, something that sometimes people lose sight of and that think that fail safe is a get you out of jail free card in any scenario. If the aircraft doesn't have a satellite lock, it will not return to the takeoff point because it can't. Um, what it will do is go into an auto land. Uh, in other words, it will just descend gently at whatever place it is at that time. If that happens to be over a pond or a lake or a big thick dense woodland, not such a good idea. That's why it's important to keep an eye on your satellite status in the app. If you have a P2 like this um, and you're flying with an FPV system, your on-screen display will give you that information as well. Keep, uh, keep a close eye on what's going on because that will allow you to understand at any one point, uh, any one point in the flight what will happen if you lose, if you lose the, uh, the, the link between the transmitter and the aircraft. So um, how can you, obviously we've said that return to home, the main uh, reason for having it is that you have some sort of transmitter issue. Say your transmitter runs out of power or you drop it on the floor and it breaks into a million pieces or there is, for some there is some issue with it and it's no longer, the, the aircraft is no longer receiving control input signals. Um, that's when it will initiate. You can obviously also do it manually. If you're again in the default vision mode, you just switch your transmitter off. It's a bit of a leap of faith when you first do that as a beginner. I know lots of people like to try it eventually, but you know there is that whole, what if it doesn't work? Um, again, just make sure before you switch it off and you initiate it that you have got all the green lights before you took off and that you have a good uh, minimum of six satellites showing on your, on your screen and you should be okay. 
The other way you can do it is by changing from the default vision mode into NASA mode, which I don't recommend absolute beginners do until they have a few hours of flying in standard mode under their belt. But for the sake of completeness, let's talk about it now. Uh, you have the ability to change the S1 switch on your transmitter and to actually um, allow one of the positions on that to be initiate a return to home without switching the transmitter off. If you are a little bit down the line and you're interested in NASA mode and things like intelligent orientation control and the things it can do, then I did a video on a couple of videos on what you can expect. Well, the main one is over here. Okay. Now, the other question I, I was getting um, asked a lot is about the landing side of the return to home, either auto land because it, 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 it can't, it doesn't know where it is, so it's coming down, or as it's coming back and it's hovering over the home location, what happens? A lot of people are concerned about um, the fact that maybe uh, it's coming down in a, an area that is either higher or lower than the takeoff point. Will it suddenly reach its takeoff zero altitude and then plummet from the sky because it thinks it's on the, on the ground? And the short answer to that is no. The aircraft is not yet clever enough to have a ground-facing radar or Doppler or anything like that and know how high it is above a surface. So what it will do is, irrespective of what height it was set at takeoff, if it's in auto landing mode, it will just keep on coming down nice and gently until it detects that it isn't descending anymore. And it normally does that, of course, if it hits the ground, uh, and then you'll find there'll be a second or two, and it will cut the, cut the throttle. Um, so if, for, uh, for some reason, it's coming home and it's landing slightly, maybe within the three or four feet of the takeoff point, there happens to be a big dip in the ground, it won't suddenly stop you know, above it and fall into it, it will just keep going until it senses that it's stopped moving. Which is, of course, why you can hand catch the things. Because if you're doing it safely, you're probably hand catching it a good six to eight feet above its takeoff point, but it still will cut the throttle once it realises that it's not moving. Um, if you don't know about um, hand catching it, which... I really recommend if you've got a gimbal, so if you've got the Vision Plus or the P2 with an H33D, I personally recommend learning to hand catch it safely and then um, you know you, you minimise the risk of, of problems on the landing. If you would like to know how, how to do that, one method for doing it safely, then uh, have a look over here. Okay. Um, another issue... Um, that I got asked about was the actual kind of return to home algorithm. What what does it do in terms of the height setting? So it's fairly straightforward. If failsafe kicks in, what the aircraft says to itself is, I need to climb to about 60 feet, about 20 meters. If I'm already higher than that, I need to stay exactly where I am. I need to hover there for a few seconds just to see if I can get the control regained. If not, I then need to bring myself back to a point just over my takeoff point, and then I need to start to descend slowly in an auto land mode, and then I need to stop my, my props when I feel that there's no more descent. Um, at the moment, there is no way of adjusting that return to home minimum height of about 60 feet using the assistant or using the app. So my advice to people is always please fly your aircraft higher than the tallest thing between you and the aircraft. That way you don't have to worry. So I really don't recommend you go down behind buildings or trees or something else because, you know, if you've misjudged the height of them and say they're 75 feet high, you're only going to go up to 60, then it could be, you know, a bit of a nasty mess if you're tangled up 60, you know, 60 feet up a tree. Um, you could be there a long time. That would be my advice. Um, if you always fly higher than that, that, that highest point, then you're never going to have a problem. If the highest point is only 30 feet, then the normal height for return to home is fine. If not, please just think about keeping a route clear for it to come back. The other thing I would uh, just recommend is that once you have a bit of confidence, is recommend that you practice how to return um, how to regain control 
from a fail-safe scenario. One of the classic things that people do early on is they push their aircraft to the limits of control range and they lose control signal. Not video signal, but you lose control signal. And then, of course, the aircraft will say, well, I'm coming home now, I, can't, I haven't got a transmitter. And then what people do is they then sit there and wait till it comes all the way back and lands, and then they take off again. What you can do is you can regain control once it comes back into range, which should only be in a few seconds. If it's just gone out of range, once it's come back again, you should have it. And the way you do that is you simply flip the S1 switch down to the middle, then back up again and then move one of the control sticks to verify that you've got control. You should see if you've got a Vision Plus, you should see that the app will say, the, the, the return to home um, picture will, will go away because it's, it's now that flipping of the switch just is enough to send a little signal to say, I'm still here, I'm back in range. Um, so you might want to, if you're feeling comfortable, you might want to initiate a return to home by switching off the, the transmitter. Um, you then switch it back on again with both both of your S1 and S2 switches in the fully up position and then flip it up and down and it should regain control. Obviously if you lose control because you've gone beyond range you won't have to switch your transmitter off and on you just wait until it comes back into range and, and do that. So you can stop a return to home you don't have to wait till it comes all the way down and land. That could rescue you if you've forgotten the bit about keeping the tallest thing between you and the aircraft out of the way. That's about it really, there is probably more. Um, if you've got any more questions, please let me know. But those are the sort of ones that I've answered a lot recently. Um, I don't think there's much more to say. Thank you very much for your time and for watching. And um, please, if you like the videos, please do subscribe and you'll be, uh, you'll be reminded of when any new ones drop, into, uh, drop up onto YouTube. In the meantime, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again soon back on the kitchen table. Cheers.